What's going on, guys? Michael Pecoraro here, and I've been listening to a ton of podcasts lately. And I thought, man, why don't I put my own perspective on games that I watch? Huge Mavs fan, so I'm going to do Mavs games, of course. So I was thinking a lot of these guys have clever podcast names and this and that. I was thinking, this is my sanctuary, my garage. I'm going to be Garage Guy. So here goes my first episode of Garage Guy, um, and I'm going to touch on uh, the game that was just played. Mavericks playing a Sunday afternoon game at Toronto against the Raptors. Um, a game in which the Mavericks had a 30-point lead with 14 minutes left and lost. And uh, shortly after the game, I was pissed off because I was trying to turn the TV off because I had to watch the Toronto Raptors broadcast of it. Not that their broadcast, the two guys, the commentators, did a hell of a job. They touched on both teams' strengths, weaknesses. But after the game, the last thing you want to hear after your team gives up a 30-point lead and loses on the road is a homer bias and I could not for the life of me turn the damn TV off so I got even more pissed off and irritated Um, but uh, my perspective on the game is it stings it sucks Uh, at a certain point you are getting hyped up I'm in the garage watching the game and I'm like yep give it to him give it to him Tim Hardaway hit a three you know you got Porzingis hitting threes. You got Dwight Powell driving the lane, dunking. You got DeLon Wright making plays, Seth Curry making plays. And all of a sudden, the ball can't go in the rim and you're getting beat by a full court press, which you see in high school. And for some reason, you can't figure it out. And what it is, is if this game was played and not trying to knock the Raptors. It was a hell of a win, hell of an effort. You can't take this away from me. But, um, you know, if this game was played in the, in the 90s or the early 2000s, where maybe the pace of play isn't as high as it is now and the three-point game isn't as uh, fluid as it is now, it's even more of an accomplishment. But in now's, now's, the game is played with more three-pointers. The game is faster. Uh, Kyle Lowry just went stupid in that fourth quarter hitting three after three. And, and not even easy, the easiest of looks, like five feet behind the line, hand in his face. Um, but the game can change quickly, obviously. Up by 30 with 14 minutes left, you think that's a dub. Not anymore. The Mavs actually fell behind with about four minutes left in the fourth quarter. So it didn't even take the full 14 minutes for them. It took them less than a quarter worth of time to catch up and that's just that just speaks to the game now um and it's frustrating because you you get such a lead you're playing so efficiently that at a certain point you let your guard down and your mentality is more play not to lose rather than the mentality it should have been which is play to win and that's what happened tonight and by the time you try to flip that switch on and match their intensity and physicality It's too late. They've got a full head of steam. They're heading downhill, and you can't stop. And that's what happened to them. Um, You know, having said this, at the beginning of this stretch that they're on currently, uh, that ended today where you're playing the top five teams in the East, before this stretch started, um, you're kind of looking at, you know, records and whatnot, and you're kind of hoping, you know, if, if if we get two, that might be a success. You'll take two. And... And then Luka goes down. And then you're hoping you can get a win or just survive until he gets back. And then, you know, at the end of the stretch, you end up going two and three. So you got your two wins, but then you look back at it and you're like, okay, we played the Heat. Luka goes down in the first 90 seconds of that game. And the team just does not know what to do without him. You know, we hit them hard. They fall down by 20-plus, and they end up losing that game in overtime. Next game, you fall up by going on the road to the best team in the league at the time, the Milwaukee Bucks, 18-game winning streak, and you snap it. You beat them on the road without Luka. Then you come back home. You play a hard, tough battle where KP actually plays a hell of a game, and you lose to the Celtics. Then you go on the road to Philly, who's only lost one home game all season, and you beat them by 19 And then you're going into this game, and you're like, okay, we've already won the two games, and now you're going up against a team that's without Siakam, the top scorer, without 
Mark Gasol, the most physical player, and without Norm Powell, a key cog in the rotation, you're like, you're kind of already chalking it up as a win, and then you go up by 30 and you lose, that's disappointing. But, pump the brakes, it's disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. And I say that because Luka's coming back. He's coming back. Should you have won? Absolutely. Is this the worst thing in the world? No. Because you lose a game like this, it stings. But it's going to wake up the bear. When this kind of opportunity comes up again, this team's not going to want to lose another one like this. This team is going to want to redeem themselves. They're not going to want to look in the history books and see that they gave up the biggest comeback in franchise's history against them. They're not going to want to see that again. So I don't think this is ever going to happen again to this team. And you think about it, you're without Luka for this five-game stretch. Essentially, he played 90 seconds against the Heat. They give up that game, but they're down 20-plus, and they force it to overtime. Now you ask the question, if Luka was in the, in the lineup, would they have won that game? Well, he got injured, and the game went to overtime. If he's in the game, does the game even get to overtime? Probably not. So they probably would have won that game. They play against the Bucks. They win that game on the road without him. Now they play at home against Boston. A close game. Went down the stretch the last few minutes. Kemba hit. Threes got hot. Would they have won that game? Maybe. That might have been the one loss that they would have still had. Just because you never know. Then they go on the road to Philly. Kill them. They would have had Luka. Still probably would have killed them. Then tonight's game. Up by 30 on the road against a team riddled with injuries. If Luka's in that lineup, do you think he allows his team to lose after being up by 30? Hell no. So you're looking at a team that in a one of the toughest stretches, if not the toughest stretch over their season, go 4-1, and one, if not 5-0. and oh. So this is not the end of the world. It stings, Mavericks fans. It stings. And if you're a Cowboys fan, it's going to sting even more because they just lost the division to the Eagles. But it's not the end of the world. If your main man was in the lineup, you would have probably gone four and one, if not five and fucking zero, oh, over the toughest stretch of your season. Now, at the beginning of the season, a lot of experts didn't even think the Mavericks were going to make the playoffs. And if they did think they were going to make the playoffs, they were going to be an eight seed. Now, to this point of the season, the Mavericks have been a top three or four seed. Now, I don't know what the standards. They might be the five seed now, but they're still. Firmly in the playoff picture. They've exceeded expectations. Just like they've exceeded expectations without Luka in the lineup. Now tonight, they had an opportunity to really have their role players and their bench guys step up and make a statement by going 3-2 and two over this stretch of five games without Luka. They couldn't do it. They're 2-3. and three. But it's not the end of the world. There's always going to be tomorrow. And now, best thing is, they got three days off. They'll probably get the day off tomorrow. Tuesday, they'll put in the practice. Wednesday on Christmas, they might have a practice, some small get-together. And then Thursday, they got a home game against the Spurs, a game in which they should win, especially coming off three days rest. This is an opportunity for the Mavericks to look in the mirror. And every time they've lost a game that's ended in some sort of adversity, they've always bounced back with a big game. They lost to the Clippers, got out out beat they got flat out out physical i don't know how to say it because i'm weak on words and i've had a few beers but they got outplayed out muscled they got pumped by the clippers they came back and won you know they had a tough loss at home in which they were down by 20 plus to the miami heat without luca they came back and won on the road in milwaukee they had a tough loss at home against Boston without Luka. They go on the road and win in Philly. Now they have a game in which they were up by 30 on the road and lose to the Raptors. 
the trend shows you that Thursday they're going to come up and beat up on the Spurs. And you know what? You can't count on it. But this team has that kind of mental resolve that you kind of expect it to happen, especially being coached by Carlisle. He's got the right group of guys. There's a chance that Luka comes back for that game. And even if he doesn't, uh, you got a group of guys that are they're going to want to prove everybody wrong. They're writing them off. And, and, and that's what I'm excited about. The last few years as a Mavs fan, you haven't had that style of play. You haven't had that group of guys that they're going to get beat up embarrassed and come back and show everybody that you know that was a one-time thing there are usually a team that would kind of roll over and lose the same way and you kind of got used to it now you got a group of guys that are exceeding expectations and surprising people and it's exciting to watch and that's why i'm excited watching from my garage and that's my first episode that's all i want to say on this i got my kid with me right now and I got another beer to drink. So I'm going to give it up right here. But I want to do this a little bit more frequently. I'm going to put the word out there about this. But uh, uh, let me know what your feedback is. Let me know what you guys have to say about, you know, the setup. Hopefully I get a little bit more production value in here. Uh, but uh, this is just a guy in his garage watching some ball. Garage guy. I'll let